What's up everyone? Welcome to part two of our CNN with Keras tutorial series. And in this one, we're going to actually build the CNN, compile and train it. And then we're going to look at some metrics with TensorBoard. So let's get started. So to give a quick recap on part one, what we did was download the Fashion MNIST dataset from Kaggle. We then imported it and we split it into our training, our testing, and our validation sets. And then we just looked at a few images just to see what these things look like. So now we're ready to begin building the model and then training it. So with Keras, it's very simple. And the basic outline for building and testing a model is to first define what the model is, then we will compile it, and then we're going to fit it. So those are the three main steps. So let's begin with importing the libraries we're going to need. So up here, we're just going to import Keras. Then from Keras.models, we're going to import sequential. Then from Keras.layers, we're going to be importing com 2 d max capital P, oops, pooling 2D, dense, flatten, and dropout. So these, each one of these is a different layer that we're gonna use in our model. So we'll get to those in a bit. Then from keras.optimizers, we're going to import Atom, and then from from keras.callbacks, we're going to import tensor board. So this is going to let us look at or log data to a file so we can look at it with tensor board later. Cool. So let's go ahead and run that. And then let's come down to where we left off. So again, just to point out the way Keras works, the first thing we're going to do is define the model, then compile then fit. So let's start by defining the model. So the first thing I'm going to do is work on defining the shape of the image. So I'm just going to create a thing called im.rows. That's going to be 28. And then m calls. It's going to be 28. So this is just the rows and columns of each image. And then we'll also define the batch size. That's going to be 512. And then finally, the image shape is going to be equal to a tuple, and it's going to be m rows by m calls, and then one because it's a 2D, but you have to add a one for the for the third dimension. So with that, now let's go and we actually need to do a little bit more formatting on our X train test and validation. So what we're going to do now is <clears throat> redefine x train and it's just going to be x train and oops, we're going to reshape it and the way we're going to reshape it is the first item is going to be the number of rows in x train so that's just going to be x train dot shape zero then finally what we want is the image shape so the remaining ones are going to be 28 by 28 by one so the way we can do this simply is just do the asterisk and then do image shape. So what this does is just unpack that tuple and put it into the reshape, um, fits it in right here. So just a little trick to simplify the code. And then basically we're going to do the same for the test. So it's just going to be X test and then all of this, since we're going to copy it, let's just save some time and then finally for validate we're going to do the same thing just reshape it and this needs to be validated as well cool so now all of our arrays are reshaped the way they should be all right now just to show you what these things look like let me just go ahead and print Let's do print x train shape. 
and then we'll do format um, hex train dot shape and then we'll do the same for the other one so this will be test this will be test validate and finally validate so you can see that we've got 48,000 columns in X train, 10,000 in the test, and 12,000 in the validate. And then the remaining is just that 28 by 28 by one, which is our image shape. Cool, so that's what the shapes need to be for training. So now, next thing we need to do is define the model. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call our model CNN model, and then it's gonna be a sequential model. There's a number of ways you can define your model. You can like just create the model and then add each layer one by one by calling like CNN model dot add. But instead, I'm just going to pass a list and the list is going to have all the layers in it. So like I said, there, you don't have to do it this way, but this is the way I went with. So the first layer is going to be comp 2D. And then the first parameter we pass is filters. So filters is just going to be a number and it specifies the output dimension of the layer. So we're going to make it 32. The kernel size. So with a convolutional layer, what it's doing is taking what's called a kernel and it's sliding it across the whole image. And it's basically taking a convolution at each step. So and a convolution basically measures how much overlap there is between the kernel and the image itself. So you're just sliding it and when there's good overlap or good similarity, you get a high value. And when there's poor similarity, you get a low value. So our kernel is gonna be a three by three kernel. And so in order to specify that, we can just pass three. You could also do pass a tuple and say three by three, but if they're the same size, you can just pass a three and that works too. Next is going to be the activation. And for this, we're going to use ReLU, which is rectified linear. And this is a pretty common activation function to use. There's a bunch of other ones like TanH, Sigmoid, things like that. But for these kind of layers, I believe the, the preferred activation is the ReLU. So, and then finally, we have the input shape. And that's just going to be equal to our image shape. Cool, so that's our comp2d layer. Next we're gonna do a max, max pooling 2d layer. And what max pooling does is it's just downsampling the output. So instead of 28 by 28 images, we're gonna downsample it and the, how much you downsize is specified by the pool size. So we're just gonna pass two, and it's basically gonna shrink the height and width down by a factor of two. So inst instead of 28, it's gonna be 14. And that's all we need to specify for the max pooling. And then finally, we're gonna do dropout, and we're gonna specify 0.2. So it's just gonna randomly drop out certain connections to the next layer. So it's a common thing to do. Um, so we're just gonna specify 0.2. Cool, and that's all we're gonna have really for our model. So the final thing we're gonna do is add a few um, dense layers, and then the final one will be the output layer. So the first thing we gotta do is flatten, and we just need to specify flatten. So it's just going to flatten out all the layers and then finally, or not finally, but we're gonna add a dense layer. And again, the filters is gonna be 32. And the activation is gonna be equal to ReLU. And then finally, our last layer is gonna be another dense layer. And oops, the filter, or basically the output dimension is gonna be 10 for the number of outputs we need. And then the activation is going to be equal to soft max. So soft max is a preferred activation for an output layer. 
<clears throat> if you want to read more up on it, there's some information on the wiki. <clears throat> but here you can see, here's the definition of the softmax. And you can see it's used predominantly in the output layer of clustering systems. <clears throat> Cool, so that's our model. That's all we need to do to define it. So step one, define the model, check. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is compile the model. So all we need to do is call CNN model dot, dot compile. And what we do here is we're gonna specify the loss and it's gonna be sparse categorical Cross entropy. I think I spelt that right. We'll find out if I didn't. And then we specify the optimizer, and that's just going to be equal to Adam. And then we're going to specify the learning rate. So it's going to be LR, and then we'll start with 001.001. And then finally, the metric. So what I think this does is it's specifies which thing we want to maximize or minimize. So we're going to maximize the accuracy. Accuracy. Yep. Cool. And that's all we need to do for compiling our model. So the last step is going to be to fit the model or train the model. So the way we do that is just CNN oops, model dot fit. So we're going to pass a few parameters in here. So we need to pass the actual data. So it's going to be x train, y train. Then we need to specify the batch size. And that's going to be equal to batch size. And then we need to specify the number of epics, which we'll do 10, which is pretty common. And then verbose, we're gonna set that equal to one. So this, this determines how much it's gonna print out while it's training. You can play with this to see what they do, but we're just gonna stick with one for now. And then validation data, we're going to pass x validate and y validate. So this is gonna be basically your test data. We could, I think we could also just have passed the test, x test and y test. But in the examples, they split up the X train and Y train. So we're just kind of sticking with the examples. And that's it for now. So if we run this, we should get our model training. So here you can see um, we've got the loss and accuracy for each epic. And it's going pretty fast because it's not too much data to process. Boom, and we're done. So now you can see our loss is 0.3, our accuracy is 0.89. But if we want to evaluate our model, what we can do is um, typically what you'll see is you'll define something called score, and then we'll do CNN model dot eval evaluate. Can't spell. Okay, and then we'll pass our test, our x test and our y test, and then verbose will set equal to zero. And then finally, we'll print test loss, and that's going to be, let's just format it. And what it will be is score zero, and since it's gonna be a long decimal, let's make it We'll just go out um, four decimal places. And then let's do, let's copy and paste this. And then it'll be test, we'll call it accuracy. And let's just make it look pretty. And this is going to be the second one, so score one. So when we run this, you can see we get our loss 0.31 and our accuracy is 0.89. Cool, so that's basically how you set up the model, how you compile it, and how you fit it. So now let's look at how we can specify some callbacks for TensorBoard so that way we can log some data to a file and then look at it using TensorBoard. 
So I'm just going to come up to where I defined the compile step and I'm going to create an object called tensorboard. And what this is going to be is that import that we did tensor capital board. And then what we will specify first is the log underscore dir. And that's just going to be, we're going to create a folder called logs and we're going to then specify the file or another folder and the format for this, I'm just going to say CNN um, one layer because that's basically what our model is. Cool. Then the next thing we'll do is we'll specify write the graph and oops, that's going to be equal to true. So this is going to create a graph in TensorBoard, which we'll see later. Next, we're going to do write grads and this set this equal to true. The histogram frequency, we're going to set this equal to one. So if when we click on the histogram tab in TensorBoard, you'll see it shows like the weights and biases and activations for each of the layers and it shows it for each epic. So you'll see when we look at it in TensorBoard, but it adds some cool features for us. So we're going to log every, we're going to log one every epic. Okay. And then we'll also do write images, set that equal to true. And this will show us the actual outputs for each layer, which is kind of cool to look at. So that's going to be our TensorBoard object or our TensorBoard callback. So now what we need to do is here in the fit, we add a flag for callbacks and we just create a list called with our object TensorBoard in it. And I think that's it. So now when we run this, it's going to run a little bit slower because it's saving data to a file. Um, actually it's running. Okay. Um, I think I need to restart the notebook because sometimes they have this problem. So bear with me for a second. So let's do run all. All right, cool. Now it's running. I'm not sure why that is. Sometimes you have to restart the notebook when you're saving stuff to TensorBoard, but while that's running, what we can do is pull up a command window and we can just type tensorboard dash dash logder and then we just specify where the log file is. So I'm just going to go and copy it right here. And now you can see that the tensorboard server has started and it's going to be on our local host with port 6006. So what I can do is just minimize this, pull up a new window, go to local host 6006. And now we can actually see the like results. So let me just zoom out a little bit. And sometimes it it's a little slow to update. So you just got to keep clicking this update button and like resizing these things. But yeah, so right now it's only done about three epics. So it should auto update, but I find myself having to click this button a bunch. But anyways, you can see the accuracy over time for each epic and, and, and at each point, there's this smoothing thing, which when you only have a few points on the graph, it's kind of, you don't really need to smooth it out. But when you're logging more data, it, it can be helpful. Here you can see we've got five epics. Let's refresh it a few more times. Get up to all 10 of them. Yeah, so we're at eight. Anyways, so you can see here, the accuracy got up to 0.89, about the same as last time. And here we can see um, some other things like loss, and I believe there's cross entropy. No, but yeah, so we've got those statistics here. Images, um, so you can see what the images look like at each layer. Um, there's not much, not much exciting things to look at. I guess these are the kernels for the Conf2D layer. So it's basically just sliding 
this three by three kernel across the image and looking for overlap. So nothing too exciting. Um, the later layers have a little bit more stuff going on in them, but again, not too exciting. Graphs. So this is what your model actually looks like. So you can see here, we have the beginning, which is the conf2d layer, then max pooling, dropout, flatten, and then our dense layers. And then this is all the like fitting and optimizing and things like that. So uh, it can be, there's a lot of stuff going on, but just know that this is your layer or this is your model here. And then this is all the metrics and things used to like optimize your model to maximize accuracy, things like that. So that's the graph. Distributions is more um, showing info on the layers over time for each epic. And then also the histogram, it's showing the bias, the bias for each layer. Um, and then it's, it goes by each epic here. And yeah, so that's about it for TensorBoard. And I think that'll do it for this video. In the next one, we're going to look at how to do the PCA and the TSNE by using um, the actual images from Fashion MNIST, saving them to a file, creating the sprite images, creating the metadata. So that way we can look at the TSNE and PSA info. So stay tuned for the next one. If you guys like the video, hit the like button. If you've got any questions, leave them below or use the Facebook group and the slides will be available on my GitHub and yeah, stay tuned for the next one. See ya.